Hi, I'm Jennifer Bensard. I'm an environmental governance researcher based in Germany, and I have been covering international environmental conferences with the Earth Negotiation Votant since 2017. And in June, together with colleagues, I covered the latest meeting of the UN Climate Change Convention, preparing for COP26. First, I think it is noteworthy um, to say that uh, countries agree to engage in some form of negotiation in a virtual setting within the Climate Change Convention. Here, while delegates agreed that no decision would be adopted, they did engage in informal consultations on a range of issues and progress was captured in informal notes. Well, progress was patchy. Um, and the level of maturity of these informal notes varies significantly between agenda items. Um, some resemble something close to a decision text, while others read almost like a laundry list of, of all possible options. Um, with regards to issues such as uh, research and systematic observation, the Nairobi work program on impact vulnerability and adaptation to climate change, as well as the extension of the least developed country expert groups mandates, we can expect decisions to be adopted rather swiftly at the next meeting, seeing progress made um, this June. On issues such as current timeframes for nationally determined contributions to the Paris Agreement, on the other hand, <laughs> the same overarching divides we saw in Madrid remain quite stark at this meeting. Countries have um, different views with regard to the frequency at which these NDCs are to be updated. But agreeing on common timeframes is important for the Paris Agreement's vision of, of ratcheting up ambition to actually materialize. Similarly, um, the same ultimately political issues remain in discussions on the operationalization of the Paris Agreement's Article 6, which relates to co cooperation for emission reduction. Accounting rules are a key issue here, especially to ensure that emission reductions are not counted twice. And another sticky point relates to exactly how to deliver on the objective of an overall mitigation in global emissions, which would mean that some emission reductions achieved through these cooperative approaches would not be counted towards fulfillment of one of the participating countries' NDCs, but instead be set aside and lead to a further net decrease in emissions. Looking at um, the issue of transparency, it is important to highlight the technical nature of these discussions. This means they're literally debating whether a certain row or column should be included in the table and how these tables should be filled out. So what to an outsider can sound like something very minor actually carries significant effect. Consistency in countries reporting is really key to accurately capture progress. Beyond the need to iron out um, technical elements, the June meeting made clear that we can expect a political bargain of transparency in exchange for progress on finance and on adaptation. Developing countries are growing increasingly unnerved about the lack of progress on these issues, as well as on loss and damage. Many speakers at the conference underscored the importance of delivering on finance for the credibility of the process and for supporting developing countries' efforts to implement the Paris Agreement. Finally, looking ahead, a crucial question is how the COP will take place. On the one hand, the UK, UK presidency is adamant the COP will go ahead as an in-person event in Glasgow. This uh, would allow for impromptu chats in the corridors, quick huddles to deliver compromised text, it would avoid uh, you know, the well-known challenges associated uh, with virtual. On the other hand, are there significant health risks associated with such a large multinational gathering, as well as a significant burden on delegates, especially from distant countries, who have to brave ever-changing transit regulation and with you know, newly emergent variants of COVID-19 and a globally unequal um, vaccination situation. Against this background, many are hoping that the presidency and the secretariat are working on a contingency plan. Observers are also keeping an eye out for details on how the UK government would deliver on its announcement to provide vaccination for delegates.